evening, everyone. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen uh, meeting. It's August 8th. We're happy to have you here. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We begin our meetings as we always do with public audience. By rules adopted by the Board of Selectmen, we invite the public to speak for up to five minutes. If anyone feels they'd like to speak longer or have more to say, I'd be happy to stay either after the meeting or schedule an appointment with you later in the week. Any members of the Board would also be happy to meet with you at a later time. So with that, we'll begin with the first um, public audience. Joan. Joan Cove, 26 Whitcomb Drive. After listening to the discussion at the July 11, 2016 Board of Selectmen meeting on the charter as presented to them with the town manager as the CEO of Simsbury, I was shocked at the unprofessional, childish display of First Selectman Lisa Hevener's rant against having a professional town manager in the town charter. She filibustered continuously about grieving for a change to a professional town manager. First Selectman Lisa Hevener is a prime example of why Simsbury should have a CEO in the position of town manager as opposed to a soccer mom with no experience in public policy. First Selectman Lisa Hevener was concerned about hateful speech uh, during public audience because she believes that questioning her unprofessional management skills is hateful speech. Having an agenda item, public audience at all Selectman meetings is governed by a court order, and this is the court order, not by First Selectman Lisa Hevener. First Selectman Lisa Hevener should be aware that speech is protected by the Constitution and everyone has a right to express their views in public forum. The resolution is displayed in the main meeting room of Town Hall under court order for all Selectmen to follow. The reason why nothing gets accomplished because First Selectman Lisa Hevener believes that being liked by everyone is more important than providing leadership skills uh, to move projects forward. First Selectman Lisa Heaven is and has been vehemently opposed to a town manager, although she lied when she stated she was undecided about the form of government as displayed in her eulogy for the demise of the First Selectman form of government. It is interesting to note that three First Selectmen, Peggy Shanks, Anita Millett, and Mary Glassman, all gave testimony in favor of professional town manager. As a concerned resident of Simsbury, I am vehemently opposed to the acceptance of the Board of Selectmen to allow performance of the slightly stupid concert that promotes marijuana use. All the gathering permits go through vetting process, and this concert was approved by all oversight committees. Promoting the use of marijuana on time property, town property is dangerous road to increase revenue. This is shameful. Since marijuana is illegal and all of the officials that approve the concert is promoting illegal use of marijuana and placing the town at risk. There were many police interventions after the concert and one person had to be transported to Granby. Did First Selectman Lisa Hivina welcome the slightly stupid concert followers to the concert as she did the Hartford Symphony? Many of our police officers were working at the concert concert and inhaling the secondhand smoke from over 3,000 concert participants encouraged to light up. After the concert, I would assert, assert that none of these officers could pass a drug test. Many officers that were leaving the concert continued their midnight shift after inhaling marijuana smoke and having the smell of marijuana on their uniforms. Can you imagine having an officer coming to your home smelling of marijuana? I would suggest that we change the name of Simsbury to Sinsbury, the land where illegal activity is encouraged. Would this renaming increase economic development? There are increased calls to the police department for dangerous alcohol consumption, increased citations for marijuana use, and arrests for other addictive substances. What are we teaching our youth? The character of Simsbury has changed over the years with acceptance of increased uncontrolled use of alcohol, marijuana, and whatever on town property. Simsbury has a marijuana factory and an alcohol distillery. Simsbury is a dysfunctional community with encouragement of illegal marijuana use and alcoholism that destroys families. Once again, this board is asked to accept a gift of solar panels from Ctech Solar. This is the same company 
that placed solar panels on the International Skating Center as they were denied abatement for payment of their property tax that First Selectman Lisa Hebner favored. This abatement was denied, and to date, they have not paid $20,560.84 on their property taxes and now also pay collection fees for Marshall's intervention. How can CTEC Solar do business with the town when their taxes have not been paid? Are they getting special treatment of Mrs. Glassman's neighbor? Past practice has been that companies cannot do business with the town if they have unpaid taxes. Is First Select Melissa Hevena going to filibuster for the gift? I would urge this board to eliminate the stipend for the first electman and follow Avon Farmington West Hartford with no payment for political position. Paying a first electman salary could be a deal breaker for a change to a professional town manager position. And all of my comments will be posted on Simsbury Patch, Twitter at Joan Cohn, Newsfeed on Facebook, and Simsbury Forum Topics. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak? Mr. Kalishman. Thank you for allowing the time to address the board and uh, welcome the Charter Revision Committee, the members thereof, and the Chairman, Mr. Rose. Uh, Ms. Cole stole my thunder, so, but I'll be brief. The five minutes of public audience, that was granted by a court order. And the reason it was granted that the people that were running the town at that time beat the hell out of Miss Cole. And she was smart enough to go to court and get a court order. And she had a judge. When he read the case, he says, this nonsense stops now and here and now. And it stopped. And the court order used to be over there. It should be on the back door, but how they run it around here, I don't know, because in my mind, they don't want you to know it's here. But it's a court order, and uh, if uh, she sh they're shaking their head up here, go up and read the court order, and you'll find out who's misleading you or who's lying to you. And that's, that's my comment on free speech. And of course... We have the best constitution, the state constitution of Connecticut. It's a better constitution than the U.S. Constitution. And that guarantees free speech. Okay? Now, just for one minute, I'd like to make a comment. The VFW does not speak for Robert Kalishman. I'm referring to the big mouths in the VFW that came out and, and are all set to chastise Mr. Trump. Mr. Trump knew what he was doing. He knew where he was coming from. And I'm not going to belabor a point, but I'm, I'm going to give you three. I'm going to give you three points that I like to point out to you. The fellow that blew up the Twin Towers, what's his name, Bin Laden? He was killed by the Navy. And you know where they found him? In a cave in Pakistan. And he had a complex where he was moved to every, every day, did his business, but they found him in Pakistan. 90% of the Taliban are recruited and trained in Pakistan. It's a fact. So this Mr. Khan who I remember from Stoner Drive, is a Pakistani chicken farmer. He's a millionaire, incidentally. And I went to a party at his house. His, the, part, the house was Khan. They lived on, they lived in West Hartford on Stoner Drive. And I remembered vividly because he pulled out a velvet chair, a white velvet chair and they used it so President Bush could address the crowd. Evidently, he's not happy with the Bushes, so now he's, he's attacking candidates. And check it, check it. If, if you think he's, he's white and lily, but here again, the VFW did not speak for me. I know who the enemy is. And I hope, well, I won't go any further. Now, the case at point, and I wasted all my time in the sense that I was going to devote full time to the Charter Revision Commission. 
which I attended. And it was, you wouldn't believe what went on. That's all it was, was a meeting for professional politicians, the self-servers of Simsbury, who are self-serving. We had an incident where months ago, when the commission met, the board passed a resolution, or thought they passed a resolution, that they had settled the pay for the town manager and there would be no stipends for the first selectman. And there was quite an argument going. And the fellow that introduced it, he didn't attend the meeting, and he's not here tonight. But I spoke with him, and I, and I was at the meeting, and uh, let me tell you, he thought that they had done away with the stipends. And at the last minute, late, the person that introduced it was Mr. Miss Osborne, she came late, and she's a professional opera, a professional politician. She ran for Democratic State Senate, and more than likely there's a strong possibility she could be running for the border selectman or first selectman. And she introduced splitting the stipends. In Mr. other words, now they want us, I'll, I'll conclude. Now they want us to pay for a town manager, and they want us to pay for the first selectman. We're going to pay double for a job. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak at public audience? Uh, Mr. Rose. I've been fighting with myself all day as to whether to do this or not. I just want to make one thing very clear, as I'm sure you know. Oh, Hadley Rose, sorry, uh, 5 Timbridge Drive. As you know, I've been the uh, chair of the Charter Revision Commission. I want to make it totally clear this has nothing to do with them. I was actually a minority voter. And that this, my comments in no way reflect the uh, judgment of the commission. Okay. I do want to address two things very briefly, though. Uh, the first being the change over to a town manager form of government. During the meetings of the Charter Revision Commission, I don't think a half dozen people showed up to speak in favor of this change. This, despite the fact that we met over 20 times. There clearly is not a surge of public opinion supporting this. Maybe that's because we live in a town that has a AAA bond rating has fabulous schools, and is rated as one of the best towns to live in in the United States. It would seem that people are very happy with Simsbury, and ve very happy with the way it's run, and very happy with the services that the town provides. While I don't expect the uh, town to go downhill with the town manager, I suspect most people won't even be aware of the change until they call up a member of the Board of Selectmen and ask to get something done. And the Board of Selectmen has to say, oh, well, we have to consult with the town manager. I think at that point you're putting an additional layer in between the voters and the person who's actually running the town, and one who cannot, you can't even vote for. The biggest goal of the proponents of this change was to get more professionalism into the system. With the current system, you have that, with someone operating as essentially a chief of staff who assists the board of selectmen and first select person in the operations of town. Each department is professionally managed, whether it be police, fire, public works, etc. There does not seem to be any danger of anyone saying, gee, my f cousin used to play cops and robbers. I think I'm going to make him chief of police. Things like that don't happen anymore. And there is no need to worry, as expressed by someone, about a first select person and the entire board of selectmen being able to interpret legal documents. I think that's why we have a town attorney. Speaking of the town attorney, why is Bob here? I don't know if he's here. Um, it is my understanding that his interpretation of the statutes was that by sending any or all of these changes forward to the public, that he felt you were in effect endorsing those changes. There was a little discussion after that, and uh, the question was, are we doing that, or should we just send it on to the townspeople to vote on it? And my response would be as follows. Much as you send the town budget to the voters, the voters rightly assume that the budget is a product of your work, and they assume that this is something you support. That's why it's going to them. I think they'll think the exact same thing with anything that you send to them in terms of changing the charter. I would hope that when your friends and neighbors voted you into office, part of the reason was that they trusted you and your judgment, that you would all do what is best for the town. As all of you know, I am sure, this is not an issue 
that most of the voters will have the same depth of knowledge that you have to have based on your service in town government. You know the ins and outs. You know all the checks and balances that are already built into the system. The simple truth is you have a much better feel for how this will impact the town than most of the voters will, and whether it is really a necessary change. So before you pass along a document to the public that they will certainly take as one that you approve the changes of, I'd like you to think long and hard about whether Simsbury has a compelling need to change its form of government. I certainly don't think so. And I ask you to reject the change of the town manager form of government. And if you ever have any questions about the stipend and the salary and how it actually did go down in the committee, I'll be here during the discussions. You can ask me then. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak to the public audience? Okay, seeing none, we'll begin with uh, I'm going to request amendment to uh, the agenda and that we add the paving gift uh, to our agenda item after item A. I'll move that. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 The agenda is amended. I'll begin with the first selections report. I'm going to speed read it because somebody has complained about its length, <laughs> not to say who. Um, it's already 11.20. So <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, first of all, congratulations to Simsbury veterans who are awarded the Connecticut Wartime Service Medals at Eno Hall on August 3rd. The following veterans were awarded medals and served in World War II, the Korean conflict, and Vietnam, and include veterans from the Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marines. And I'm going to go ahead and read them because it is really an honor for them and to I have think received you did have some Gulf War vets in there, too. And uh, I think there were a couple first Gulf War. Oh, what Desert there? Storm. Okay. Yeah. Yes, you're right. Thank you. We'll add that before it goes out online. Um, Raymond Banks, Anthony Giannini, Gilbert Kleiner, Thomas Sorgio, Frederick Stingle, Joanna Vincent, Frederick Arnold, David Blumey, Leonard Fenelon, Stanley Harrison, Terrace Keefe, James Richardson, John Romano, Harold Sterrett, Thomas Tarisco, Albert Zakarian, Robert Gothier, Robert Hefner, and, and that's Hafner, H-A-F-N-E-R, unrelated to me, Thomas Hammock, James Rosenberg, Harry Baronia, William Lynch, Donald Seagy, Elmer Dahl, and James Sparkowski. Uh, thanks to everyone who helped organizing it, including Connecticut Department of Veterans Affairs Commissioner Sean Connolly, State Representative John Hampton, members of the Simsbury Veterans of Foreign Wars, the Simsbury American League, and the Daughters of the American Revolution, and of course, down staff, who did all the setup and takedown for the event. And uh, our Director of Social Services and the Senior Center. Saving taxpayer dollars, I'm happy to announce that the Town of Simsbury and the Board of Education received a member's equity distribution check for $17,000 from Kerma, which is our insurance company for the town. Very pleased to have that. I want to congratulate uh, Tom Cook and Sean Kimball uh, for their work. I'm working with Kerma and getting them to cover um, cybersecurity, which was not currently covered, so it's being now covered at the same cost. So two savings there. So thank you for your efforts on that. Uh, the Veterans Memorial Project is underway, and we hope to have it completed by November 1st. You will see sometimes that the entrance to the library is closed. If that happens, please enter through Library Lane. Uh, legal notices are now on town website, and we encourage folks to check that out. Uh, we have a word on trail etiquette, share the trails. They are for everyone, and this was put forward by the Rails to Trails Conservancy. They've listed six golden rules for the trails that we encourage everyone to join us in uh, following. Use safe speeds, be courteous, keep right, pass left, standing still, stand aside. Mind your pet, keep pets on leashes close to you, and be alert, and know and follow the rules. So to all those who are using the trails, Thoughtfully and carefully, we thank you. And uh, if everyone does that, the trail experience will only get better. We've got a few announcements of events coming up in Soonsbury. If people want to know why we're a top 10 best place to live in America, it's because hundreds of volunteers put in wonderful amounts of hours to make great events happen in town. And a few of those coming up are Taste of Simsbury, which is August 25th, Hike to the Mic at Hugh Blind Tower, August 27th and 28th, Picnic in the Park, that's uh, put on by the Town of Simsbury Aging and Disability Committee and the special, Simsbury Special Education PTO. And they invite all residents of Simsbury who have a disability or a family member with a disability for a picnic and fun on August 27th at 1130. Uh, please RSVP to Diana Yisley or the Senior Center. September Fest is coming up. 
September 9th, 10th, and 11th. The Simsbury Grange Agriculture Fair is September 17th. The 31st annual Simsbury Fly-In and Car Show is September 18th. Sinsbury's giant used book sale is September 24th and 25th. So just from that list, those are almost all put on by all volunteers with the assistance of town staff. So I'd just like to congratulate members of the community who are not cynical or complain. They step up to volunteer and make this community great, and we're very pleased that they do that. So thank you to all the wonderful volunteers. I want to remind folks during the summer season of hurricanes to sign up for emergency alerts, and please remember you do need to sign up for all three. Town News and Announcements, Simsbury Community Alerts, and CT Alert, which is the state system. We don't say the H word here. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> We're doing well. <laughs> Uh, Simsbury Farms ice rink warming room is under construction and remind folks that there will be some parking disruptions over by the farms and we appreciate your patience as we go through that. In terms of economic development, congratulations to Tyler Anderson of Millwright's Restaurant for being named as a semi-finalist by the James Beard Foundation Awards for Best Chef Northeast. This is a really big honor and we're very thrilled that they uh, choose their home as Simsbury. So congratulations to them. Open for business, congratulations and welcome to Raina Morton who on August 2nd opened a State Farm Insurance office at 1243 Hot Meadow Street, offering home, auto, business, and life insurance. Congratulations and welcome to Sinsbury. We're so glad you're here. Present company, uh, congratulations to Jeffrey Lizotte, the extraordinary chef at On 20, and his partner for taking over the space located at the mill at 2T to open Present Company. They hope to open in late August and offer a small seasonal menu, and we're looking forward to trying uh, what they have to offer. Congratulations and welcome. Welcome and congratulations to Karen Holmes, who is the owner of Be Trendy, a newly opened salon for kids and adults located at 538 Hot Meadow Street. I had a chance to stop by and visit with her over the weekend. Very excited to have her there. If you have a little kid, they have a car that you can sit in while you get your hair cut. Um, you have to be little. Would I fit? No, you would not. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> coming soon, we'll be pleased to welcome Louis Valentin, who will be opening Sabre Olive Oil Company and Art Gallery mid-September, and that will be opening right across the street. So very pleased about that. And then, um, as you'll see, some of the things uh, listed are under construction in Simsbury, permanent and on the horizon, and these you have seen before. I will just note that Green Tea Restaurant has a, will be having a new name, and that's going to be Table 570 Asian Fusion. So we're looking forward to that. Okay. And with that, we will move on to action items. The first item before you is to approve tax refunds, and I ask for a motion to approve tax refunds in the amount of $65,181.01. So moved. Second. Uh, we'll go with uh, Sean and then Elaine. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 The motion carries unanimously. Uh, we amended the agenda to add the acceptance of a gift from Garrity Asphalt Paving Services, and Tom Roy is here to explain this gift. Uh, Garrity Asphalt for a number of years has been a uh, contractor in town that uh, predominantly does uh, most of our paving. Um, they do our paving through the state um, vendor in place bid system, so we actually get excellent pricing and good quality work. They're looking to expand their services and go into use a technique of heat scarification where you actually heat up the existing roadway to a temperature that you can actually peel it up. They mix it with new fresh liquid um, asphalt and they place it back down so that when they're done it actually looks like a new road surface and then we'll typically put an inch of traditional asphalt on top of that. We've actually been using a process um, similar to this in town for about the last 15 years. Um, the last three or four years we actually have not been using it, combination of cost and, and different methods. With Garrity um, getting into this business, they are looking for a place to kind of work the bugs out of their system. Town Forest Road is scheduled for paving. When we met with them, it was an ideal fit. They would like to use um, Town Forest Road to basically break in their new equipment, perfect their, their process, and they're offering to do that at no cost to the town. And in return, obviously the town, we're going to get to see firsthand the quality of uh, the work from the new equipment they have. And the value of the gift? $40,000. Thank you, Tom. Um, I'll open it up for questions from members of the board. Uh, what happens if it doesn't work? The good thing is it's, it's relatively a safe bet. You certainly can't make the road if you've been on Town Forest Road. You can't make it <laughs> 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 Just 
just curious. Yeah. Like, and, 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 I'll, and I'll tell you the beautiful thing about Town Forest Road in its proximity <laughs> to the um, highway department, if there is any level of failures, it becomes a very cost-effective road for us to repair. If there is ever a section of roadway where at the end of the day we have the extra little bit of asphalt, that's exactly where we would be able to put it for patching and so on and so forth, which is also to a certain extent why we've let that road get to the condition it currently is in. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Mike? Um, I, I think it uh, sounds like a great idea. Uh, Garrity's uh, grew up in town, have been long time uh, for a number of years, were residents and businesses in town. Uh, I am in, am in favor of this. I think it's a good thing. Any other comments? I want to, uh, Tom, I want to thank you for working with the local business uh, and to the benefit not only of the town but to the business. This is also economic development and also is a tremendous uh, financial benefit to the town. So with that, I will take a motion to approve the acceptance of a gift by Garrity Asphalt Paving Services in the amount of $40,000. So moved. Second. Okay. I will go Cheryl on the second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 The motion carries unanimously. Uh, Tom's going to be with us for a while. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to go knock out everything he's got here. And I thank you for Tom. And also, I just do want to point out, members of the public may not know how much work goes into putting together a submission piece to the Board of Selectmen. It's a tremendous amount of hours go into it. What we see is only a few pieces of paper, but the hours spent preparing them are tremendous. So that he has four, sort of like appropriate because it's the Olympics. <laughs> so that's uh, to the extent where we, are, where we are with that. You have before you a motion to authorize the first selectman to execute a side letter agreement to participate in the CROG Easy IQC procurement program. The Capital Region of Council of Governments, which is CROG, has partnered with the Gordian Group Easy IQC, which stands for Indefinite Quantity Contracts. Who knew that? Are you impressed I knew that? Program to provide CROG members a range of maintenance and construction services using cooperative purchasing and a network of competitively bidded awards. Our contracts. This will allow Sinsbury to access a wide range of pre-bid maintenance and construction services, including electrical, mechanical, windows, roofing, sidewalks, and the like. This will support quality and reduce administrative time and effort required to prepare, to prepare bid packages for smaller buildings, but still comply with our procurement process. Exactly. Um, basically, it's a system that um, CROG has been using with a number of other communities for the past couple of years with some of the projects that we have coming up in the next several months, including some of the window replacement work that we have scheduled for this building, for example, um, some of the soffit repairs, things along those lines where it's light carpentry fit perfectly within this program. Um, we would put together a scope of work. It goes off to Millennium Builders, who's working with the Gordian Group. They come back with a price. We make sure that it's fair, that it fits with the contracted price, and we give them the go-ahead. Um, with all things, we'd be looking at the right project for this. Not every project would go through this program, but it gives us options. I'll open it up for questions from the board. Seeing none, I'll ask for a motion to um, authorize the first selectman to execute a side letter of agreement to participate in the CROG's Easy IQC procurement program. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All uh, in favor? I'm sorry, oh. do we need to qualify that with the town attorney reviewing the document before we do it or no? I'm familiar with the side letter Pardon? agreement, but I'd be happy to take a look at it. I'm just check. I don't know if we have to or not. I'm just checking. We, we do that as a matter of course, but we can make the approval condition on it, so I have no objection to that. Uh, it's a friendly amendment. Uh, Chris, do you accept the friendly amendment? I do. Sean, you good with the second? All yes, right. Sir. So with that amendment, subject to approval by council. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. We're moving on to item C. To authorize the. Please, I'm going to stay. <coughs> okay. Uh, can you please let the record reflect that Mr. Payne is recusing himself for the consideration of item C? We have before you a motion or a proposal to authorize the first selectman to execute a letter of intent subject to review by council with Amoresco Inc. For community shared solar project at the landfill site and um, to do this we have we uh, I had the opportunity to meet with the folks from Amoresco who are in town and gave a great presentation but Tom is here it's a little bit complicated and there's a lot of steps involved and I'd like to recognize members of the clean energy task force could you please stand and be recognized who are bringing this to us tonight <laughs> so thank you for your efforts on that Tom 
Uh, as Lisa said, th th this one's a little bit more complicated than the last two. Uh, we first brought this idea to this board back in uh, January 11th of this year. Um, DEEP is putting together a series of pilot programs where they will allow what's called community or shared solar. Essentially, for those of you who have homes where you, you are, either have trees or a neighborhood association or for whatever reason don't have the ability to put solar panels on your own roof, this will be a place where we will site um, a larger solar array. Right now we're looking at the landfill site for this particular project. You would, through um, a process of credits, essentially be making use of solar panels to, to offset your electricity bill through electric, electricity that's generated at some other location. Um, this is the first time in Connecticut this has been done. It's been done in Massachusetts for a number of years. We went through, since we last met on this subject, a RFQ to determine the best qualified um, consultant to do the work. We had a number of very well qualified solar firms. Amoresco is with us here tonight. They had a strong history of doing this type of work in Massachusetts and they're partnered with Blue Wave, which is part of the public outreach portion of this. Um, what we're looking for tonight is endorsement by the Board of Selectmen for us to go forward with this project. As Lisa did mention, we, we met with Amoresco earlier today. It is a very complicated project in terms of making sure that their proposal and the town's commitments are in line. As such, we'd like to probably look for your endorsement tonight, and we would be looking to come back with a um, special Board of Selectmen meeting on the 29th of this month. Um, that way we will have all of the specifics that are going to be in that letter of intent fully executed so that you're not agreeing to anything in terms of vague generality so that you'll have an actual document that's final before you before you authorize the first I just want to mention the reason why it's coming to us at this point is the RP by the state came out very quickly and the turnaround time is very very fast Beginning so, September. so there was not a lot of time to do the internal work that we feel needs to be done to bring it for the board of selectmen for final approval so that's why it's coming to you in two phases but we did want to bring it to your attention as you walk us through what's involved and, and, and some of the key features is that um, there's going to be priority given to Simsbury residents um, there's absolutely no risk to this program the way the proposal is written by DEP you're almost you're, you're assured that you will lower your monthly electricity bill if you were to participate in this program. Um, the size of the facility that we're able to site up at the landfill is roughly one megawatt. Originally we were hoping that we would be a larger site just due to the topography, wetland considerations. That looks to be the largest practical site that we can have. Um, the town has the ability to be an anchor tenant to this facility where we could purchase 40 percent of the power generated at that facility for use on uh, town buildings. Um, 20 percent minimum of the project is going to benefit low to moderate income families throughout the state. Amoresco is targeting um, housing authorities in terms of where to market that to make sure they meet that as a minimum. Part of the discussion that went on earlier today with Bob DiCrescenzo is making sure that because of the Amos Eno will is that we have all of our profits coming off of this site benefiting the poor. So we actually may be looking in the next couple of days as we structure this agreement to raise that number up substantially. There'd be a lease payment of the town between eight and ten thousand dollars. We want to narrow that down so that we're not between eight and ten thousand dollars, so we can be very specific on that it is ten thousand dollars. Hopefully, um, if the town was to participate at the full um, forty percent of the site electricity, we'd be looking to save roughly thirteen thousand dollars a year in electricity. There's going to be an annual donation to the community farm of Simsbury of five hundred dollars to support their programs. They are going to make improvements to some of the landfill access roads in and around the site to make sure that they can get to their solar array and that the construction equipment doesn't damage our wonderful uh, gravel roads out there. Um, they're also going to work with our school system and the community farm to provide K-12 through educational opportunities. Site tours, they have um, lesson plans that they can share with the schools, and there's also going to be a kiosk placed either here, town hall, which is going to be able to show how much energy is pr being produced each day at that facility. So there's a level of tying it back in with the community. So, Tom, could you walk us through how it works? I mean, first of all, this will be at the land site, so there isn't a higher or better use for the property at that point. And could you talk about how? 
the town and residents get reimbursed. It, it, it's a guaranteed number. So can that's you talk about that? That's great. I'm going to talk about the landfill side a little bit, and I think I'm going to let my friends from Amoresco have a chance to talk a little bit about the exact specifics of how this credit works on your bill, because it, it does get a little bit um, intricate in that. Um, we looked at a number of sites. The landfill by far and above was, was the best site. The landfill proper, the actual mound that you see, has no value to anybody. You are never going to plant crops there. You're never going to build a building there. There's, there's nothing really that, that can be constructed on that. Um, when they put the solar array, they have to be careful. They're actually going to do what's called a ballasted system, where if you can imagine in the most simplest term, they're going to put the structures that hold the solar array down and very glorified sandbags to keep them in place because they're not allowed to puncture through the soil there because you wouldn't want to release any of the chemicals or gases from the trash that had been deposited there a number of years ago. Um, we're also going to be working adjacent to that area. There's another two acres where we currently are processing leaf compost. Also, again, that's where we're going to have um, these solar arrays. All of the designs are going to go through a number of engineering controls, including review from FAA um, requirements to make sure we're not going to have any glare issues um, with the airport. Um, essentially, we're hiring professionals. They're one of the better firms in the country that does this to make sure that what we get is the right thing. But I don't know if the, my friends from Amoresco would like to talk a little bit about exactly how it works with Eversource pays, you pay. Yeah, it's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> As Tom said, hi, I'm Mike. That's why I ducked, ducked out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> perfect timing. Uh, my name is Mike Zimmer. I'm from Amoresco. I'm a senior manager for my firm, Solar Group. Uh, so thank you for having us tonight. So uh, it, it's very complicated, and there's a number of agreements that get signed before this happens. Um, and so first is the agreement with the town of Simsbury between my firm and the town would be to lease the land through a lease agreement. Um, that's the first contract. Um, the other piece of it is an agreement that we are hoping to get through this RFP with DEP that would obligate them to buy the power that's generated by the solar system. So what we will do is we will bid a price, a dollar per kilowatt hour, um, too deep, uh, and then if they select our bid, they are obligated to buy electricity from us at that price for 20 years. What it also obligates them to do um, is we'll bid a price uh, and an adder that they have to give to participants who sign up for this program onto their bill, to your CLMP Eversource bill. So if you opt into the program, um, and it's all opt-in, opt-out, every 30 days you can decide if you want to be in or out, although it does have a limited amount of subscri subscriptors that can uh, be in the program, just given the fact that it the generation that it creates is finite. Um, and so it can't be open to everybody, um, but we're working with our partner Blue Wave, who is specifically targeting uh, citizens of the town of Simsbury, uh, low and moderate um, low moderate income residents in Simsbury, uh, and potentially the town of Simsbury taking power too. Um, so the mechanism that you get savings, and you're essentially guaranteed savings, is every time we generate a kilowatt hour at the, at the PV system, um, and the percent that you agree to sign up to, um, you get about a penny of savings per kilowatt hour. So the way you can look at it is if you're paying 22 cents per kilowatt hour right now, you'd be paying 21 cents per kilowatt hour. And you'd multiply that by how many kilowatt hours you use in a year, um, you figure out how much you save in a year. What that works out to be is about $700 if you were to sign up for this program. And there's really no risk. Uh, you couldn't be upside down where you would be uh, paying more for this energy. It's really just a credit savings. So com complicated. Uh, if there's any questions, I can elaborate more or I can pull back, but uh, hopefully that explains a little bit about how this kind of works. Um, I'll sit back. Thank you. I just want to point out for members of the board, about 75 to 100 residents would be eligible for this. So it's not a lot of residents, but um, as Bob DiCrescenzo said, in order to comply with the Amos Eno deed, we would probably have to take any of the benefits we receive from it, and we would want to, I would hope, and uh, give that to the poor, because that's the purpose of the land. So the lease agreement will be put towards the poor, subject, of course, to Board of Finance approval. Uh, the credit savings we get would be put towards the poor. Um, Bob, did you want to add to the Amos Eno's deed restrictions? Yes. Uh, uh, <clears throat> I think you're all familiar with the requirement of the Amos Eno deed. Elaine may not. Uh, uh, no, I, well, I am. You are now. From well, okay. other avenues. There's a, <laughs> there's a provision in the deed, goes back to, I believe it's 1882, that in the original grant of the land, the, the uh, Mr. Eno... Uh, granted the 
land to the town so long as it was used to benefit the poor of Simsbury, is a phrase that's in the deed. And over the years, um, the town has endeavored to do that. This is the landfill site, uh, which right now is not producing any benefit to the poor of Simsbury. If this program were to be in place, there would be really three sources of benefit to the town of Simsbury. The first would, and most obvious, would be the lease payment. Now let's call that $10,000 a year. That would be a pretty standard lease between the town of Simsbury and Amoresco for a 20-year term for the lease amount of $10,000. That money would have to be dedicated to social services, perhaps the fuel bank, some other program that went directly to the poor of Simsbury. Secondly, the second benefit from this program would be if the town is the so-called anchor tenant, receiving 40% of the of the credits generated by the array, uh, that would generate a dollar amount that the electricity cost for the town would be reduced. You said it's 13,000 13, or so. I think the town would have to show an increase of 13,000 or the equivalent of that savings to benefit social services or the poor, perhaps a special account for those eligible for veterans benefits or low income benefits of some sort. And lastly, there is the benefit directly to the public. Uh, if the 60% of the overall benefits from this array were to be um, allocated to the housing authority or to a uh, you know, housing complex, that would be able, you'd be able to show a very direct monetary benefit from this to uh, the poor of Simsbury. Now, uh, the reason why a special meeting is needed is that the RFP from DEP came out a couple of weeks ago, and in it, the responder, respondents have to be able to demonstrate site control. And site control in the RFP is defined as, you know, the respondent owns the land or has a firm option to purchase the land or a firm option to lease the land. Now, uh, because this is a municipality, um, there are certain steps that have to be taken before the Board of Selectmen can enter into a firm option, a so-called put option, to lease land. Seven acres of town land, like any other land, has to go through a process, and that process is familiar to you. Uh, you know, you have to at least, you have to, at the very minimum, hold a public hearing on this proposed option to lease. Now, the submission is due September 1st. It's an incredibly short turnaround time, middle of the summer. I have no idea why DEEP made it such a short turnaround time, but they did. Um, and before they can submit anything on, on, on behalf of town land, land owned by the town of Simsbury, we need to put in front of you not the concept of an option to lease, but an actual option to lease with all of these business details and other details worked out. Um, and that's what will take a little time to do. Um, and I'll take any questions on that. Bob, we would also hold a public hearing on the 29th as well. That's right. That's right. And then eventually an 824 referral, but that yeah, could wait. Because even though it's an option to lease, if the conditions of the option are met, they, according to the requirements of the DEEP RFP, would have the legal right to require the town to enter into this lease. So for me, it's the same as approving the lease. There will be some um, requirements in that option to lease that if the requirements aren't met, then they have no right to exercise the option. Requirements such as, you know, positive report from the Planning Commission 8-24, uh, positive approvals from at least the Zoning Commission, and other town approvals that would have to come subsequent to the submission uh, of the RFP. Um, and one of the things that came up is would they pay taxes on the personal property of the solar panels? And we're looking into that, but it looks like on the first read of the Connecticut general statutes is that they would not, that those are exempt by the state. Well, yes, you're familiar with the statute. You, you dealt with the same statute with the, uh, the ICE rink, 12-81 mm -hmm. subsection 54D, I believe, which says on or after January 1st, 2014, any photovoltaic array such as this one is exempt from taxes. Uh, 
got to make sure that the law has it. The law has this law has a habit of changing a lot, so we just got to confirm that since that time it hasn't changed again. But it looks like right now this array would be tax exempt, uh, and we're going to have to give you a firm determination on that. Uh, the other thing that it will probably need at least discussion with and possibly FAA approval because it's right next to an airport. Yeah, so the, those will be um, conditioned and looked at as well. And also some sort of indication from the uh, uh, state attorney general that uh, this program, in the attorney general's opinion, is consistent with the terms and conditions of the Amosino deed. So you can see there's quite a lot to do in a very short amount of time. Um, but we did want to bring it to you because the window is closing, and we do want to thank the Clean Energy Task Force because it actually was a tremendous amount of work, and we appreciate all the efforts they put into this. And to Tom Roy, who spent hours on this, uh, getting this ready for today's meeting, and if you approve it, we'll spend countless hours in the next <laughs> few weeks, uh, as well Bob and Tom. So I just want to thank staff. Yeah. I just have two quick questions, one for Bob and one for Tom. In the ultimate lease agreement, what are the termination rights that would exist for the town of Simsbury? Well, we would have to commit, the town would have to commit to a firm 20-year term because that's the amount of time that Amoresco uh, would would use to fully amortize their in their uh, uh, financial commitment, which is, I believe it's around $2.3 million to put this array in place. So um, it would be, that that's why I call it a conveyance of land. It's a 20-year fixed term. Right, okay. Um, so. and, the, and the actual acreage that the panels would cover is? I think we're at seven? Seven acres, okay. Uh, seven. okay. About half of which is truly no other possible use, productive use can be put because it's the capped part of the okay. land. <coughs> uh, Sean. Just forgive me. When we do an 8-24, we don't approve until we get it back. Yes, and that's part of the uh, the uh, complexity of what right. this document is actually going to be. It's going to be called a option to lease subject to certain requirements such that the option E cannot exercise the option unless the, the requirements are met, one of which is 8-24 approval, another one of which is positive action by the Board of Selectmen in authorizing the first selectman to sign the lease. Another one is, you know, approval of the Zoning Commission of the site plan, possibly a text amendment, because I don't see a clear path in, in the I-1 zone for a permitted use here. So, you know, a lot of steps need to be taken before the option E will have the right to exercise the option to lease. So, in essence, we're still following the process we always do we're just yes we're more we're slightly more formal with all our letter of intent here yeah the, let me talk about that for a minute uh in previous rfps of this type the and you guys correct me if i'm wrong but i learned today that typically dep would accept a letter of intent from the property owner and that's why you have that in front of you upon close examination of this particular rfp they want something more firm in terms of evidence of site control, and that's why they're using this term option to lease or option to, or they'd accept an easement, but the easement doesn't work for Amoresco. Okay. And, um, and just, just to follow up, Sean, you, you brought the point, it is, it is unique in that we have kind of a chicken and the egg situation, right. and we have a project which we have a fair chance of, of being selected for, but by no means is this a guarantee. Right. right. And, mm -hmm. So provided we go through these steps, if zoning fails to perform or planning fails to perform, I mean, do we have any liability? No, the, the, the option has to be written that if any of those steps fail, okay. then the option is null and void and there's no further right of Amoresco mm -hmm. to option the land. And in terms of going through this proposal piece, Amoresco is doing all of this mm -hmm. how it is. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, I, and I certainly appreciate that. Um, and, uh, I lost it, sorry. Um, I have a quick one. Um, in terms of eligibility for people using the power, I think Tom said that it was people who might not be able to have solar arrays on their home due to other environmental factors. And I think Lisa said it was income-based. So I just want to be clear that it's both. No, or yeah, either one or the other, or They're 20% strictly by DEEP's RFP process. 20% has to go to low to moderate income. And that's how it stands. Yes, and that, but and, any and other resident that, is eligible. And from that point on, they can market to anybody within the Eversource territory. We've asked, 
because we're going through all of this effort right. that we start with Simsbury residents first. But just because you, your house may not be a good candidate for solar, perhaps during the Solarize campaign you had had them come out and they said, there's, you know, there's no way to put it on your house without cutting down all of these oak trees. That doesn't put you ahead of somebody else who simply said, I don't want it on my house. Mm -hmm. it, it's not going to be that specific. It's something that they're seeing the market. Now, is this going to be first come, first serve? How do you determine who is well, going to take part? It's essentially first come, first serve, but we're going to have focused marketing starting this century. Well, and in this option agreement, the lease agreement, they will be required under the terms of the lease to uh, make every effort and endeavor of, to provide it to low-income residents because of the conditions of the ENOD. But uh, your average resident could participate in the program also? The program generally, yes. Okay. Um, and if your average resident has picked another electrical supplier on their bill, as people do now, are they eligible or not? Yes. Because it's a credit, I understand. Yeah, it's a credit. I got a lot of nods. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you've got this whole list of things they add, mostly add to your electric bill. Yeah. At the bottom of that list, if you participate in this program, this will be a credit to you of one cent per regardless kilowatt. Regardless of who your supplier. Regardless is. of the supplier. Okay, I just wanted to know. Right. So yes, if somebody asked yeah. what the benefit is to the average homeowner, one cent per kilowatt hour. Which translates like to between five and seven hundred. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think part of this, in addition to the strict financial sense, I think the Energy Task Force big reason they've been such proponents of it is the fact that it's a demonstration product of, of how clean energy can work. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I'm sure lots of people will want this, but I just want to know how that's going to work. Yeah, no, that's a good point. It is limited. Only seventy-five mm -hmm. to one hundred residents will be eligible, so that you know is something to consider as well. You want more political conflict? So, in a nutshell, a lot. It's, it, the threshold issue is whether the board of selectmen wants to take the next step and have us collectively put together a firm proposal uh, for your consideration that will allow Amoresco to submit a proposal to DEP. No guarantees are going to be successful there, but if the, if the town doesn't take the step and give them evidence of site control, they can't even submit. That's it. So what would, could you help help us with the motions? So we're going to two motions. One would be if we're so inclined to hold a hearing on the 29th public hearing. So that would be noticed in the papers. Mm -hmm. But the first motion would be to, how would we word that? Um, indicate support for the Amoresco proposed submission um, and direct staff to develop a form of a uh, option to lease necessary to comply with the DEEP RFP requirements. They have that motion. That's well. That's different than what the agenda. It is asked for. Okay. It is. Um, all right. Just so we're all clear on that. Just, like I move what Bob said. <laughs> <laughs> I advise that. that. <laughs> I advise that. Yes. I second that with a question. Yes. Go ahead, Sean. Um, so we're we're having a public hearing because of our land disposal. Yeah, process. relatively new uh, state statute, which arose out of the whole Haddam situation. The legislature passed a statute that basically says that any municipality, before they can convey any land, has to hold a public hearing on the conveyance. I interpret a 20-year lease to be a form of conveyance, and that's why I believe. And because this is a put contract, it would if they meet all the requirements, we would be required. They can compel to, you to sign the yeah. lease. So, so it, it would be an. A, technically a conveyance so that's why we would hold the hearing on it just everybody bookmarked that's why it takes so long to get stuff done that's fine. <laughs> oh, so we have a motion by Elaine a second by Sean or is there any further questions okay all in favor please say aye aye, aye. 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 any opposed the motion carries unanimously thank you to the folks Thanks, from guys. Amoresco for coming here very much appreciate it may I have a second motion <laughs> uh, to hold a public hearing on the possible conveyance of the land through an through a 20-year le lease option to be held at 6 p.m. on the 29th of August. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 The motion carries unanimously. Do Thank we also, you. We're not a 24 in this yet? No, uh, that's a good question. Uh, no, because um, until the EEP actually chooses Amoresco as a successful bidder, there's nothing to convey. If, if they don't get the bid, then there's the lease option fails, and that's the end of it. 
if they're successful, that's one of the requirements now be written into it. Understood. Okay. And Tom is still with us for item D, <laughs> uh, which is. Um, Gift. Yes, to accept the gift and approve the placement of solar panels on the Community Farm of Sunsbury's property. The Community Farm of Sunsbury has been offered a gift of 5.2 kilowatt solar array that would be placed on the property owned by the town of Sunsbury. These panels would reduce the operational costs of the farm and serve as an educational tool to visitors of the farm. The Community Farm of Sunsbury would agree that when the lease with the town expires, the solar array would become the property of the town. We were, as you may recall, we referred this to the Planning Commission. Sorry, Mike, I forgot to name it. <laughs> we're up to that item half. All right, yeah. we're up. <laughs> well, we renamed your own. Uh, we referred this to the Planning Commission for an 824 referral, which we uh, did receive a positive report on. And so it is now before us again. Uh, the project is scheduled to be presented at the September 19th zoning meeting for our site plan amendment. And so, Tom, I will turn it over to you. I, I think um, we presented this back in June. I think uh, long and short of it, it's, um, it's amazing that we're talking two solar projects right across the street from one another. Um, this would be a, um, a great project for the community farm, and it's um, great to see tech, you know, local businesses see the opportunity to donate this. Um, what I just handed out is a letter from both SeaTech and the community farm in terms of acceptance of the gift and acknowledging that in the event that the community farm of Simsbury no longer leases that property, that they would give up all of their rights to that um, solar array. Um, it's uh, a 5.2 megawatt unit, um, great educational potential, and the only last um, check kilowatt, kilowatt, big one, big one. <laughs> <laughs> and these are not Stuff actually really on the roof. These will be standalone. Th this is going to be a tracker system where it's essentially um, pole mounted and it will follow the sun. Um, the only last piece of approvals, they have to get a site plan amendment from zoning, and as Lisa mentioned, it's going to be going f before zoning on September 19th. So we'd be looking for approval um, of the solar panels on town-owned property and acceptance of the gift. Sean. Remind me which side of the road it's on? The airport side or the non-airport side? That's the non-airport side. Okay, good. good. No second question. Then. Any further questions for Tom on this? I may have a motion to authorize the town nope, to accept the gift and approve placement of solar panels on the community farm of Sinsbury property. These are being donated by SeaTech Solar. Yes. So moved. Oh, second. Just a quick question. Sean. Just because I have to. This this is not in lieu of the taxes owned by SeaTech. No. Okay. There's no. Uh, and we have a. Clear. We actually now have a new gift form that's been approved by council, which we will ask them to sign, which says specifically this is a gift with no expectation of remuneration or services in exchange. Fair so we will ask them to sign that. Okay. All right. Want to lead in on the next one? We got a. Oh, we got a vote. Oh. Are there any other comments before you vote? All in favor, please say aye. 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 The motion carries unanimously. Um, you have before you item E to authorize the town of Simsbury to participate in the Small Business Energy Advantage Program. And I'd just like to again recognize and congratulate <laughs> the Clean Energy Task Force. Whew, you guys are busy. <laughs> uh, this is another um, program that they are putting forward before you. It is a request to partner with the Chamber of Commerce and to participate in the Small Business Energy Advantage Program. The program will be for small businesses of the town to obtain a free energy audit that will include a list of all eligible energy efficiency measures they could take and the estimated savings they could realize. Local businesses can select other for firms, and all participation in this program is voluntary. And for each business that participates, a $50 donation will be made to the Clean Energy Task Force so that they continue their mission of looking for energy efficiency savings for our residents in the town of Simsbury. Um, it mentions that a letter will be sent to all businesses in Simsbury, not just chamber businesses, and followed up with workshops and marketing events, and the costs will be covered by the Clean Energy Task Force. Correct. Is that correct? You got it. I got that? All right. So why don't you add what you, anything I missed there? Uh, I just think this is a program that businesses could always take, could already take advantage of, what the Clean Energy Task Force is just really working to promote it and put that push on. I think um, all of us in, in and through our daily lives, we're busy with everything we're doing. Same thing with small business owners. And this is just an incentive to get them to take an advantage and get some of that low-hanging fruit, replacing some of their lights, replacing some of their mechanical systems, and ultimately save money at no cost to them. 
And you have a draft of the letter that would go out in your package. This is actually essentially the same program the town did about a year ago where we did all of the lighting and um, HVAC upgrades in this building, um, the WPCA, the library, Eno, and the um, public works facility. Any questions for Tom? So I move we authorize the town's participation in the Small Business Energy Advantage Program. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 The motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Tom. Do, do we get you through everything? I'm done. You're <laughs> done. All right. Well, enjoy your evening. <laughs> we will move on to item F, which is to approve the tariff of water storage tank easements. And Bob, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is the final action of the board we'll need to take. Is that correct? Excuse me, sir. Final uh, ever. <laughs> it's never done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's close to the last action, the board? Uh, probably. Uh, the reason I say probably <laughs> is once all these documents are approved and recorded, um, we send all that to DEEP with a title, uh, 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 with a title search showing that they've been recorded, and the plan is for DEEP to take an exception to these two easements uh, because right now they have, as you know, a conservation easement over the area of this land um, and you know that's the plan but um, sometimes the plan changes when it goes to the Attorney General for their review so I think it is it's definitely a big step forward um, and we're doing all this so that the Terrafield Fire District can receive the grant monies they need to actually complete this process so these easements have been reviewed by the Terrafield Fire District and also by their council and also by uh, Dave Steiger over at DEP and everyone has signed off on the language of them um, just as a quick way of review there are two of them the first one is for the actual location of the new tank which is adjacent to the existing tank the second one is an easement across the existing access road and that easement includes the right to uh, keep and maintain the water line because a water tank without a water line is not very useful. Um, the third step will be once the new tank is in place and operating, the fire district will demolish the old tank and then give the town a release of that easement area for the old tank. So that's the basic plan. Um, now that's all going to happen. I think we have someone that can show us, show you exactly where these easement areas are uh, briefly. Uh, so that you get comfortable that um, that we're not doing any anything major in terms of uh, what the area looks like today. Now, we emphasize the access road easement is over is over the existing access road. Technically, though, they have a separate access easement uh, which will be extinguished. I am Shelby Boshman here from Woodard and Curran. I just brought some simple mapping. This should look pretty familiar to everyone, uh, but we have split it in two. So before it was shown as one long piece with um, a parcel around the water storage tank. Now the water storage tank is its own easement, uh, restricting access, and then um, the road is a separate easement. Uh, people will still be use it be able to use it for walking. Um, it will not change purpose. Uh, we're just adding the fact that the Terrafield Water Commission is able to maintain the water main that is in this access road. So that's the concern there. Any questions on that? No, it's a good change. And you make a great point. This board has seen this actually multiple times because this did come to us for an open space refill. We did the A24. Yes. It's gone through conservation, open space, open space open parks space and rec. Like work out there in May, and this is, like you say, the final step. Okay. Any, Any further questions? <laughs> All right, so we are getting close. I think I'm ready for a motion. May I have a motion to approve an easement entitled Water Storage Tank Easement to the location of the new water tank on Laurel Hill? So moved. Second. Is that the lane? <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All right, get ready, guys. Yeah. May I have a motion to approve an easement entitled Access and Water Main Easement for access to the tank and for the location of the water main? So moved. Second. Oh, you guys are letting me down. That one. <laughs> I know I did. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 
Uh, Bob, does that do those two motions take care of everything you need? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for all your work. You, and we appreciate yeah. all the efforts you put into this. And I uh, would like to recognize Bob. This was actually a tremendous amount of work uh, to get this docu these documents ready. And so we do appreciate Bob for your efforts on that as well. So thank you, uh, members of the Terrafield Water District. If you could just raise your hands and let us recognize you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Very thank much you. appreciate it. Okay, we are moving on to item G to approve public gathering permit applications for 2016. These events are being at, you are being asked to approve have been reviewed by Police, Public Works, Planning, Fire, and the PAC manager and the Farmington Valley Health District. Um, we did have one that is no longer before us, so I'm going to let uh, Jerry walk us through them. Thank you, Lisa. Um, yeah, uh, Mr. Vincent uh, called me today to advise me that the opera performance uh, has been canceled. Um, they do hope to try and do that at, at another time, but it was not going to work within the time frame that uh, they had hoped. So uh, that event will not be happening this year. Uh, the other four events uh, are all uh, repeat events. Many have been done for a number of years. Um, Latimer Lane PTO 5K Race and Run, uh, Sensory Fly-In, Trinity Church uh, Fall into Fall Fair and the Trinity Church Pumpkin Patch. Both of those are on the Simsbury, are on the, I'm sorry, on the Terrafield Green uh, and have been, uh, I believe this is their third year. Seem to work well, uh, you know, in that area. Good use of the of the green. Village Association seems to like the uh, the use of the area and it's been good for the, the Trinity Church. So all these are good events and all have uh, um, passed muster with, with, with all of our folks. So Where is the Latimer Lane race being held? It's in the Latimer Lane area. I've actually uh, I've got a, a map that I can uh, get to you. It uses um, uh, all roads in that area as well as a piece of the greenway. Um, there is no road clo there are no road closures involved with it, um, but they will be using uh, uh, an extra duty officer. Uh, you give me a second. I can uh, it will start uh, at the beginning of Valley View Road. Left onto Redstone, uh, left through Old Canal Way. They've got permission from the Old Canal Way Neighborhood Association. Left onto the Greenway, left through the yard of uh, 40 Simsbury Mar Manor Road, who they've gotten permission from as well. Right onto Simsbury Manor Road, left onto Mountain View, right onto the school driveway. Okay. And, That's and again, great. same same route seems to have worked before. Now everyone makes their way back, and so <laughs> all good. And to the extent, I mean, these seem like when they get to us that they're easy approvals, but it's actually a tremendous amount of work on Jerry's part, coordinating with all our departments and putting this all together. So again, thank you, Jerry, for uh, your efforts on this. Right. Um, so the road race and flying will require special duty officers, but those will be paid by the event organizations. Okay. Any further questions for Jerry? And they're all on the same day. Um, no, there are a couple of the three, flying. Three of the four. Are. Three of the yeah. four. Yeah. 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 Yes. It's going to be a busy day. So we're going to have quite a town. few special yeah. duty officers on out that day. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Just a just a quick question because I know there was an incident at the flying years ago. The the chief continues to remain satisfied with the safety plan down there and, yes. the, and keeping was, people away from the planes. Yes, that was really the more the traffic flow and parking down there, and they actually work with I'm going to say Granby, I, I believe Granby, okay. uh, as well. So both. Uh, police departments are involved with the traffic uh, control down there. And then they're satisfied with the setback from the runway because a plane almost ended up in the crowd? Trying to avoid that. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to make sure that the Jerry, we will avoid that. <laughs> we will avoid that. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it, it sounds funny, but I actually saw it. It, yeah, it, was, no, almost, it was almost really bad. No, you have but, to uh, take it. I mean, it's, uh, you, we forget that these are actually dangerous yeah. vehicles. But again, as, as I said previously, as long as the chief is, is satisfied, I am. So, all right. I move that we approve the uh, public gathering uh, permits as presented. Second. Uh, just friendly amendment with the exception of the opera. With the exception of the opera. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Uh, we will move on to item H. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. Sure. Um, you have before you a motion to authorize the first selectman to execute a KSAC grant application in the amount of $5,323 to support local prevention activities. This is something we apply for every year. 
The Social Services Department applies each year to the Capital Area Substance Abuse Council, which is known as CASAC, for a grant to provide funds for substance abuse prevention. We have used these funds for nalax uh, naloxone, which is the Narcon drug uh, for heroin overdoses, Family Day, the Police Cadet Program, a distracted driving campaign in the community for care. Any questions on that? May I have a motion to authorize the first selectman to sign the grant application to KSAC for the substance abuse program? So moved. Second. We'll go with Sean and then Chris. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 The motion carries unanimously. Uh, we have before us now discussion and possible action on the Charter Revision Commission. I'd like to uh, recognize and thanks the members of the Charter Revision Commission who put in countless hours that you heard over 20 hearings I'm town staff Tom thank you for your efforts on that that was a lot of uh, time and effort uh, and members of the public although there were not many those who did we thank those who did come out um, and give their opinion on that and uh, council who has also put in a tremendous <laughs> amount of work on the Charter Revision Commission so I bring it up to council to come and say where we are in the process and what steps we need to take The Charter Revision Commission has met <clears throat> and has conferred um, over the issues that were raised by the Board of Selectmen. And on August, that was August 1st, I believe August 3rd, the final, final report and final revised, proposed revised charter was both filed in the town clerk's office. You have officially received it tonight. Therefore, you have 15 days from tonight to take action on it. Um, any actions you can take, and this, can, this is the language in the statute, shall either approve the proposed charter or reject the same or separate provisions thereof. Um, so those are your choices tonight. You can accept, you can approve the proposed charter um, or you can reject the proposed charter or you can do a combination of both you can approve some of the proposed changes and reject others and I believe we have provided a resolution uh, it was, we don't we have not distributed it. I can just put that out very quickly. Uh, yeah uh, for your action and I was going over my notes from the last meeting just to clarify while we have 15 days in order to meet the time period before the referendum I had August 10th, which is two days from now, scribbled down somewhere in my margins. Do we have a closer deadline than 15 days? No, it's 15 days from tonight. Because it's a election, the date of the election is November 8th. Mm -hmm. If your idea is to put it on the ballot uh, November 8th, mm -hmm. you, uh, because it's a national election, state election, national election, um, you have to have everything completed into the town clerk 61 days prior to the election day, which roughly speaking is let's call it September 6th so we don't have to worry about counting days oh, on the so I was writing September down random 6th. dates for no good reason that's good. <laughs> uh, no I think you might have been thinking of 15 days from the date that oh, um, it went Last back time. to the charter revision that yeah, that was, I think that was me talking on when we had to get it back by to do it to okay I, I just had a row of dates in the margin I couldn't figure out what I was yeah you do not have to take action tonight however you do have to take action within 15 days of tonight so the issues that will come before us is, um, and Tom's getting the copies, but I'll just go through them now with um, Bob in the room, is one, whether to change the form of government, two, whether to um, make certain amendments to the Economic Development Commission. Uh, and That's new language, by the way, not to interrupt you, but that yeah, is Yeah, so there will be new language there about putting it as a requirement that the Board of Selectmen create an Economic Development Commission by ordinance. Um, the next one is uh, eliminate the Human Relations Commission. The next one is amend the Sinsbury Charter, uh, the Charter to create a culture, a separate culture commission apart from Parks and Rec as part of the Charter. To expand the Open Space Committee to include uh, new membership. I believe it's, how much did you recommend? Three? Three. Three, Three new members? Um, no, three public members. Three, three public. public members. Which would be two more than currently. Two more than currently. So total of three public. Yes. Okay. So two additional members. Correct. 
uh, to make technical changes to the town budget and the appropriations process. So those are basically dates and requirement changes and that we can have Bob go through them one by one if you'd like. And then finally to make, uh, to include gender neutral language in the town charter and I'd just like to recognize the Simsbury Girl Scouts who uh, put forward that request to me that I passed along to you into the charter revision. So if you wonder if you can make a difference in local government, Girl Scouts, you can and you did. So thank you. Um, <coughs> Regarding the uh, uh, just regarding the change of uh, form of government, the stipend, the calculation of the stipend has been changed. You will recall it was 15 percent of the proposed town manager's salary. There was some discussion at the board of selectmen level that that would necessarily uh, uh, require that the first selectman would have to recuse himself or herself from acting on a town manager's salary because it would set for selectman salary, the the uh, charter revision commission uh, reviewed that, and based on um, input that uh, we provided, changed it to salary to be set by the board of selectmen. The reason for that is you'll recall there is a uh, amendment to the Connecticut Constitution that says that you cannot increase the salary of an, a public official during their term. So if uh, the way it was written it was $15,000 plus a COLA, and we looked at that very carefully and said, you know, that's call it a stipend, call it salary, call it it's compensation. And it would potentially run afoul of that constitutional, state constitutional amendment passed in 1982 that prohibits a legislative body from increasing the compensation of a public official during his or her term and even a COLA would be an increase. So um, the Charter Revision Commission took out any reference to a fixed number or a COLA or anything and said to be set by the Board of Selectmen, which in my experience at least is typical of most charters. And Bob, you, part of the, I believe the Charter Revision Commission, but let me know if I have this wrong, said changes to the salary go with the term, not with the person. So you went and made it get because the Constitution does not say you can't decrease this. That's correct. Yeah. That's so this correct. would incorporate the policy, the longstanding policy of the personnel subcommittee that said no changes. I believe that's true, yes. Okay. Is that yeah. what the Charter says? Uh, the revised Charter? I, I thought I really want to have this conversation. <laughs> What section is that, Bob? Four eleven. Four eleven. It's on page fifteen. First selectman <clears throat> shall not receive. Uh, let's see. First selectman or select woman shall be chief elected. Of Official of the town shall receive a stipend as established for each term of office by the Board of Selectmen in accordance with the Connecticut General Statutes. Uh, first Selectmen shall not receive any other form of compensation to be eligible for any employment benefits. So it's for the term of office. It so you could not for reduce each it. term of office. Right. That's correct. Yes. Okay. Can I ask one question? Yeah. In the um, in the actual edited. Um, charter that goes with the proposals there just was one recommendation or one change in there I wasn't sure what category it fell into and that was the um, wording to switch the deputy first selectman from an, a voted position to appointed by the first selectman so what category would that fit into is that the it doesn't seem to me that's part of the town manager change um, in terms of having the public vote on it is right. your point I don't think any change was made to the deputy first selectman and how. Well, it's in the edited document yeah. mm -hmm. that's been submitted to us, so I, I assumed it was a recommended change. It's it's in yes. the it's. Yeah. I'll find the page for you. I, I'm not resisting the concept. I just no. wanted to no, know I got where it, it actually. It's uh, section 402. First selectman presiding, the selectman shall meet after each of an organizational meeting. The first selectman shall appoint the first. Selectman or select woman shall appoint from among the members of the Board of Selectmen a deputy first selectman or deputy first select woman who shall serve as acting first selectman or first select woman in accordance with the provisions of section 503 of the charter. 
right? That is a change. That's, that is, that a, is change. a change. Yes. Yeah. So, Chris, sorry, to that, Chris's that point, does that need to be voted on, or will we have a catch-all? Well, if you vote on uh, issue number one to change the form of government implied within that issue or all the other changes made to the form of government, including the totality of Chapter 4, that's okay. where that change comes up. Okay. You're essentially changing. That, is, that one change is essentially replaces Chapter 4 and 5 of the Charter. Okay. Which so if that were voted down in referendum, the deputy for selectman position would remain as currently written. As currently stated in Chapter 4. See, that's, that's an important issue because um, there's a number of questions here that you could frame. And if one gets voted down, it can't drag down the others that got approved. Mm -hmm. So they have to stand alone. And the way it's drafted, Chapter 4 and 5 are where you find the major change in form of government. But to Elaine's point, could we do a separate vote and say deputies Absolutely. are separate and then that way if one fails, the other could stand? Any change within this document is subject to your fashioning a question, an individual question, to address. I had a question on Economic Development Before Commission. Before we leave that topic, can, I, yeah. can we keep that up? Was your group aware that you were making that change? Because it didn't make it in your report and nobody spoke about it and I didn't even know it was in there. Yeah, I, I believe well, we did have some discussion about it. I think it got kind of as thoughts. It got melded into everything else. And one of the problems we would run into is if we made the town manager change, how did it impact A, B, and C? And if we didn't, how did it impact A, B, and C? And, and it got a little it got a little tricky at some point. So some of the minor changes I don't think might have slipped into the report. Yeah, because I'm confused. It's an oversight in, in our report to you probably. Because I'm confused because... How you pick the deputy has nothing to do with <coughs> town manager. So, at least in my estimation, it doesn't. It seems like that one got slid in there. Well, it falls under the description of the duties of the first selectman, I think, is how it ended up in yeah, that I section. I think that was the nature of the discussion before the commission because the, I'm thinking back, this was a while ago. This mm -hmm. was an old one. Because the office of first selectman is changing. Um, the commission, the majority at least of the commission, believe that the deputy first selectman should be chosen differently and be of his or her choice. And I don't, forgive me, I don't, research, no. I don't recall all the rationale for it. But um, I mean, I, I guess it's. I mean, it's. A, yeah, what I think it's a happened, less of importance. This, this was kind of a discussion early on, even before we really got into the real meat of the town manager aspect. Sure. And in all honesty, it probably got lost a little bit in the shuffle in terms of the report. <coughs> but I mean, if we're lifting and loading the first selectman's duties to the de to the town manager, the deputy is really powerless going forward. I mean, there is the role of the first selectman is much different. Than the right. But if we separate the questions and the town manager fails, then that is a. Well, see, I'm interested if, if that's all lumped in with the form of government, then that's where it should stay. It shouldn't be a separate question. Well, it's a class to the form of Understood, but I, I take exception to how it was sent to us if it's now going to be spiked out. Because if it's it was intended to be spiked out regardless, then it should be it should have been sent to us and discussed in that manner. That's our call, not theirs. Mm -hmm. How we I'm just telling you that I'm not there, but that's so go ahead. Um, can I ask one other process yeah. question before we get into the nitty gritty? Um, I believe Mr. Rose brought up at public audience that our vote tonight was essentially a vote to approve or disapprove. And it was my understanding that we are voting to forward these questions on to a referendum by the public. And that differs from the way we handle the budget. A budget is something we generate and we vote on and approve and then we ask the public to and that is not what happens here. I think that's a great question. There has been a lot of confusion. We'll look, turn to Bob for um, some clarification there. And it may be in how we form the questions. That's why well. I bring it <clears throat> I could just rely on the language of the statute. Not later than 15 days, the appointing authority, Board of Selectmen, shall approve or reject. Now, you're the legislative body. You put into that word approve the meaning that you put into it. It, I mean, it was my, and I could be wrong about this, that I always thought that we were approving the referral to a referendum, that we were not approving the, the measures that are actually before in the 
proposal. I would expect the word refer instead of approve if that were the legislative I, intent. Yeah, I understand that's that. How I, I mean, that's that how I, personally, I interpret it as we I'm are just endorsing. Back to the last if we say yes, revision, we're endorsing. And I recall the discussion that happened. That I wasn't on the board at that point, but I listened to it. And it was, um, it seemed to me that they were voting to refer the entire question excuse to me cheryl okay. could um yeah, we, point of order please um members yeah. of the public if you would like to carry on a conversation you're welcome to do so we just ask you to do it out in the hall okay cheryl uh, am i remembering that incorrectly i i what i i think what i've said consistently is that the word approve means that you are taking an action to approve the report and if you want to make statements regarding what that word means to you as individual members of the body, you may do so. But, um, you know, in terms of strict statutory construction, mm -hmm. you have to give, you know, the plain meaning to words. And to me, approve means you are approving the report, meaning that you are in approval of the changes being suggested by the report. And um, in fact, the next section talks about how it gets to referendum. It's separate. It says the appointing authority shall by majority vote of entire membership determine whether the proposed charter shall be submitted to the, shall be submitted to the electors for approval or rejection at a regular election so again approve or reject you're going to submit it it's almost as if you are you are the legislative body of the town but under home rule which is what the statute is you are sending the report on approving the report for submission to referendum for the ultimate approval by the uh, electors of the town of Simsbury. Um, sort of like a budget. When we pass the budget, it doesn't go to referendum unless it's received board of selectmen approval. Well, that's why I was comparing it to that, and I, I just wasn't clear on whether we treat that exactly the same way. And I, I think that's a good question. There has been some confusion there, mm -hmm. actually, on my part as well, so I appreciate the question. I appreciate the explanation. Yeah, you approve or reject the proposed changes or individual sections thereof I have a question on Economic Development Commission so the new recommendation I believe is that um, the original when it came to us at the hearing but at the joint meeting was <coughs> to eliminate EDC from right. the Charter they have since revised that recommendation based on the conversations we had and now put it in there and said that the Board of Selectmen must create by ordinance and Economic Development Commission. I have two questions there. Um, can this board be ordered to legislate? And two, um, what happens to the Economic Development Committee as it stands now? When does it does it disappear completely? Do those members translate? Can we do we have do we create the qualifications we're looking for? If you could just walk us through that was too. The answer to your first question is yes. The charter can compel the legislative body to take an action, such as creating an economic development commission by ordinance. Having said that, what that ordinance says is entirely up to the board of selectmen. This change was in reaction to the testimony, according to the commission, the reaction to the testimony that the commission heard about the necessity of having a commission on the one hand. On the other hand, the testimony that I believe was before the Board of Selectmen that it needed to be more nimble. And um, it was believed that creating a EDC by ordinance would allow the Board of Selectmen to change that ordinance in between charter revisions uh, and not tie it directly to the statute as it is today. Okay. Um, and, um, you know, once, if this were to pass, then the future Board of Selectmen after December 7th, 2017 would have to pass some form of ordinance that creates some form of an Economic Development Commission. And what would happen to the current Economic Development Commission? Well, they commission? cease to exist okay. as of December 6th, 2017. Sean. And I, I was strong in, a, in an opinion previously on this. I, I do like this change because I think it continues to show this Board's commitment to economic development while recognizing that perhaps, and, and we're talking with the previous chair that, or the, the, the new chair, that we need to have a fresh look and, and, and maybe come at that commission a bit differently. I had the opportunity to attend recently, and, and again, that was, uh, my, my thinking this evening is affirmed by that. So I, 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 I do like this change, and I think it, uh, it addresses my previous concern, so. Lisa? I, I was actually uh, 
had this <coughs> had this not gotten changed would have opposed this um, because I really feel in my heart of hearts that we as the town need to make a, a statement and our charter makes a statement that economic development is important to us and leaving it in the charter is is I think very important I think their their solution to this was was a good one and I do think the responsibility falls back to us at least today as the sitting board of selectmen uh, and the future selectmen going forward to make this work so I, I was not willing to support it I am in favor of this change now Thank you, Mike. Anyone else have any comments? So we do have, as I laid it out, we can do this several ways. One, we can vote for everything all at once. My recommendation to you is that we vote one by one. Um, we can start with a uh, change in the form of government or end there. So I leave it to the board's discretion as to uh, how they want to approach this. Can I just make a recommendation? We previously talked about this of perhaps combining some of these as to not have was it seven questions? Mm. Just because I think we're going to get into an issue of ballot space and real estate. There is going to, it is going to be uh, difficult to do on the ballot. There's no question, and there will be a cost associated with this. I, I, yeah, I had a conversation with the registrar of voters just completely by accident where she asked me how many questions we were going to have, and I said, I don't know yet. And she voiced some concern about space and uh, how we were going to handle that. I, I know I'm a proponent of having all of them because I think they are distinct issues that are difficult to combine. I would also point out, and, and I realize it's a national election, but our budget referendum has seven questions to it. Mm -hmm. So it's not as if the public isn't used to being able to go in and read through a su succession of, of questions. So I'm more of an advocate of the clarity and transparency of having each one lined up the way they are here. I, I just think to Lisa's point, it was a, a matter of we're going to it's going to cost us money to do this with uh, because there are so many other things on the ballot this time normally in the referendum it's just mm -hmm. yeah. budget questions I, and I think you know from my conversation with the registrar it has to get down to four in order to be effective and I don't know that we can get it down to four I think yeah. we could probably combine maybe C D and maybe E but I don't think that I don't think that meets the registrar's concern of shortening the ballot so I don't know if it's worth doing that well and I, I'm not saying we have to take that as any part of our decision-making process I just put that as a point of information yeah. well, I, I mean I do have a solution I mean we can combine EF and G and get rid of, get rid of D and then we have four questions so, I, I have to say I'm in just support suggesting of, yeah it's fine I am in support of Chris's this is a big decision we'll be making as a town I don't have a problem with letting the voters see what the changes are that's, I think I mean, that's fine. I, I'm really not dug in on this one. I just, okay. It's just a matter of preference. Yeah, I, I only bring it up just for information purposes. Okay. So to your earlier point, Lisa, do you want to do, because I, I think we had pretty consistent consensus starting backwards previously. Do you we did. Do you start want to this off on a positive note? All right, so let's go back. Let's, let's go back. Let's do something tonight, shall we? <laughs> we have actually done quite no, a bit no, tonight. We have. We've I didn't, been I didn't mean through. that in the context of the whole meeting. I meant that in the context of this long process of the charter, which should should be a long process. Uh, you know, I do want to say, I, I do want to thank, that as we know, the Charter Revision Commission did not come in unanimous, and they really showed how you can agree to disagree and have differences of opinions and still be civil, and I think that that goes for our community as well. I do not expect unanimity on, although now I'm perhaps only on one, but <laughs> <laughs> but on, I thought there were going to be two, but thank you, Mike, for that. <laughs> but to the extent that there is disagreement, okay, we can live with that. That's what we do as a community. Uh, we can have differences of opinion and still respect each other. So we'll work backwards. And the first one would be, and um, I'm going to ask Bob if we can eliminate the last phrase of that, and then maybe no. Um, shall the charter of the township of the town of Simsbury be amended as proposed by the Simsbury Charter Revision Commission to use gender neutral language throughout the town charter to take effect December 4, 2017 as approved by the Simsbury Board of Selectmen? Do we have to put in as approved by the Simsbury Board of Selectmen? That's well, it's in all of them. It's in all of them. I know. Um, no. Because we don't do the budget as approved by the Board of No, Selectmen. you don't have to affirmatively state in each question. Um, I, I think by law, the fact that it's on the ballot mm. means it's satisfied Gross. Section D of the statute. Um, 
it would shorten the question. One of the other concerns I have is one of these questions is pretty long. Not only a lot of them, they're also pretty long. Um, and, you know, someone's got to squeeze them into that little strip of paper above the offices, and it's, you know, it's going to be a challenge. Um, Could you show that again? This little strip yeah, of paper. Thank you. <laughs> That's because a uh, technical I term. I actually have a suggestion that every single one of these starts out with a significant portion of the same language. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what if we state that question, if that's what Bob just said or you said? At the top. The, so at shall the top. we. And then have each one as a separate. Yeah. Propose two. Yeah. That, that would save space and. Can we do that, Bob? And actually make it easier for voters to read the ballot yeah, as well. Well, you would do shall the charter of the township of the town of Simsbury be amended as proposed by the Simsbury Charter Revision 2 and then, and then A, B, C, D, E, F. It would actually pull so. the issues out to the voter's eye. I don't think so because each question has to be able to stand, stand alone. alone. Okay. I think what you may be able to say is, at, shall the charter be amended to change the form of government? Let's go with G. From yeah, first selectman uh... to town manager to take effect and take basically take out. In each one of them, the phrase of the township of the town of Simsbury, mm -hmm. take out yes, as proposed by Simsbury Charter Revision Commission, because again, it wouldn't have gotten here if it hadn't been approved. And lastly, as approved by the Simsbury Board of Selectmen, and that would make shorter questions without mm -hmm. changing the substance. So, so would G read, shall the Simsbury Charter be amended to use gender neutral language throughout the town charter to take effect December 4th, 2017? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so that's the first one. Can you say that again? Lisa, yes, I will please. read it again. Let me know if you have this, um, if the clerk needs it. Okay. Shall the Simsbury Charter. Well, it says shall the charter. Just I was going to add Simsbury. Well, the fact that you're voting on it in okay. the voting booth in Simsbury. Never mind. Shall the charter <laughs> <laughs> be amended? to use gender neutral language throughout the town charter to take effect December 4th, 2017. Right. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any further discussion on that one? Just procedurally, are we going to have to do this again, reading the resolution yes. and all, all these? Mm -hmm. So we're just taking a test vote basically what right I, now? What I propose is that once you get done forming your questions, you take a little bit of a recess and Tom and I change this Word document to read exactly the way you want it to read. Okay. And then you can decide whether you want to waive the reading or read the, the okay. whole thing. But right now, we're, theoretically, we're we're going to we're yes indicating where our position is in all seven That's questions, right. and then we have to do this again. Yes. On a, a straw basis. vote on each okay. issue. Just want to be clear. Okay. Not that I'm concerned about it. Just looks. It's okay. From a clarity standpoint. We have a motion. We have a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. G passes unanimously. Uh, for F, shall the charter be amended to make technical changes to the town budget and appropriations process to take effect December 4th, 2017? So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Again, just to be, if we want to take one out, we would then have to take an, an affirmative vote to remove, correct? So that would not be a straw vote. We, or we would have the straw vote, then we would have to take another yeah. formal vote to remove. But I'm, what I'm, I'm interpreting what you're doing now is you're forming the questions you want to vote on. Okay. But from a procedural standpoint, I, you previously advised us, I thought, that for us to take something out of the report, four of us had to strike it. You have to move to reject. Okay. Do we have we have to move to reject it? We can't just fail to approve it. Uh, I'd rather have you move to reject it. Okay. Then the minutes are clear what you did with it. it. Doesn't look like you forgot to take it up. Okay. So right, are we? This is a straw vote in favor of these that we're indicating how we're going to vote once the questions come before us. Yeah. You're right now. You're forming which questions you want to take action on. Okay. The wording of the questions you want to take action on. So are we the, voting in favor of these actions? Up to you. I mean, mm -hmm. Not yet. No. Because we're, we're, we're forming the questions. Again, rem and again you're, you're the council on this, but we have the ability to reject provisions yes. or send the questions on with our blessing. Correct. And that's it. So right now, we're just sharing with each other our formal opinion on it. We then have to 
reject questions if we want to formally, and then we have to read all this again to send it on to the ballot. And that is our, that's our final approval of what, what everybody has done. So right now we're just... It sounds like there are two, I think what I saw you guys doing was two things. You were reforming the questions, and I think you were also at the same time expressing support for the last two items. Correct. So, uh, that's not the vote as to whether to put it forward to the voters. We for haven't record. arrived there yet. Uh, we will do that after we take a recess where you correct the things. Right. Okay. Take final action on the revised uh, so, so, we okay. so, we'll go on to item E. Change Shall the, the charter be amended right. to expand right. membership right. of the Open Space right. Committee to take effect December 4th, 2017? May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item D. Shall the charter be amended to create a culture commission to take effect December 4th, 2017? I have a motion. Second. Oh, I need a first. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion on that? I am not in favor of this. I am not in favor of this. <laughs> okay, so we have an expression of I'm in favor of this, yeah. but um, you're okay you with why, the language? But that's, uh, yeah. And, uh, when we get to the yeah, vote. Yeah, when we get to the vote. Okay. Yeah. All in favor of the language? So right now, I just want to make perfectly clear, we're just approving the language, and then we're going to circle back after a break. As to whether to vote to forward it to the, to approve it or reject it for the voters, right? I'm reject, I mean, I'm rejecting the language as well, just to be explicit here that <laughs> <laughs> I'm voting no on this item all the way through. <laughs> I am Just too. to be clear to everybody. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Just so we know. All righty. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me how you really feel. Okay. Well, we're doing a straw poll there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Then for C... Oh, Mike, did you want to say that? We didn't vote on that. Oh, so. All in favor, please say hi. I don't know what aye. to say. Aye. So that's three. What do we do with that? We don't have the language. We have to use the, the other language. The language stays the same. I mean, it's a moot point. If there aren't four votes to send yes, it on, cares. it doesn't okay. matter what the, what the question okay. is. All right. Well, but, but again, not to be technical, but it takes four of us to kill something. Otherwise, it does go on. No. Once no, we have it one. takes four of us four to move, move it on. Hold it takes on. Four to I'm not done. If I move to reject it, I need three other selectmen to vote with me to pull it out. Otherwise, it stays as as proposed, oh. and then we have to then vote again to send the whole package on. I think you should make positive motions on each one. So it, in this particular one, if someone were to move to accept the recommendation regarding the creation of a uh, culture commission, and that motion gets three votes that's a rejection of that recommendation so it's clear that the vote you're taking i guess you could do it your way if you move the rejection no, not my way or i just we yeah. did this four years ago and again yes. I, I could be remembering it incorrectly but folks tried to pull out the recommendation on design review and it failed um two to three yes and then you ultimately had to vote then on the whole package we never we didn't took the items individually we took rejection we did votes. it differently that's why we're doing it this way. i mean okay i just if, I didn't, you, if that's if it either process is fine i'm fine with it it's just i would just say if you want it to fail you should make the motion to approve because you're not going to get four and then it will fail it's mm -hmm. it's going to take four votes to it get to get right. any one of these proposals to the ballot, it's going to take four votes. Right. Okay. If so it doesn't get four. four it's Elaine and Chris will make the motion to approve. Gotcha. All right. So then I move to just just <laughs> just in case I move to reconsider the language. Okay. Just so that if it does make it, we should send the right language on. Okay, and that and so that would read then. No, I don't want it. I, the language needs to be proper. <laughs> shall the charter be amended to create a culture commission to take effect December fourth, twenty seventeen? Okay. All in favor, please say aye. Of the language, aye. aye. Okay, so it's just the language. And it's going to come back to us. These are not consequential motions at this Sorry, point. Sorry, I'm not they trying were, to be a pain in the neck. No, no, it's, it's just... fine. No, they're good questions. And... <laughs> this, is kind of in, this is kind of important. We're changing our government. We need to get this right. <laughs> Got to do it right. I'm 100% okay with that. Okay. 
Item B, shall the Charter be amended to make certain amendments to the Economic Development Commission to take effect? We skip C. Oh, C. Okay, sorry. Shall the Charter be amended to eliminate the Human Relations Commission to take effect December 4th, 2017? So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, I don't know if this new motion reflects the change that the Charter Commission made. Is this? It does. Yeah. Okay. It does. Shall the Charter be amended to make certain amendments to the Economic Development Commission to take effect December 4th, 2017? Just before we, to me, I, I mean, I understand it because we do this every every two weeks, but is that question going to make sense to somebody that walks in? No. Certain changes? I mean, I what are those changes? You know, I mean, I know what those changes are, but. I think that's a good point, Tom. There will be explanatory materials made available. I, I think you'd find it almost impossible to uh, to put the, for example, to explain. We had the, the same question on, the, on changes to the budget process. I, yeah, I mean, I get it. So, okay. so uh, you know, one of the next steps is for Bob to draft a document, essentially. Is, is the user's guide to what's happening. Yeah, and this time. resolution authorizes the pre preparation of explanatory text, okay. which has always in the past been mailed to every household. Fair enough. Thank you. So I uh, I move to approve as Lisa recommended. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Shall, moving on to item A. Shall the charter be amended to change the former government from first selectman board of selectmen to the town manager former government to take effect on December fourth, twenty seventeen? So moved. Second. This is in the motion is to approve the language, not necessarily. If we're taking a straw vote. Um, does anyone have any comments on that, Elaine? I just on the straw vote issue. I've actually, you know, spent a lot of time kind of looking into not only the notes from our charter revision commission, but also researching our peer towns, not just our neighbor towns. Um, I personally think towns like um, Ridgefield and Newtown and Fairfield are more like Simsbury than Glastonbury or Avon. And so looked at a lot of their recent charter revision considerations. They have, if they've considered it at all, overwhelmingly voted down any move away from elected officials um, in even lo lesser positions. Ridgefield, two to one, voted down having a appointed tax collector as opposed to an elected tax collector. I think towns that are like Simsbury, towns that are thriving financially, that are thriving in a way that is the way we'd like to see our town thrive, really have kept their ties to traditional New England uh, electoral government. And I, you know, do read the state statute as that we endorse it. So, um, you know, come November 8th, I will fill out no in the bubble in the uh, on the ballot. So I will be voting nay tonight, not because I don't think that people should have a chance to vote on it. I, I think it's fine, um, you know, to turn it to the people. But I, personally, I can't endorse it as something that I personally think is right for Simsbury. I other? thought we were just voting on the language right now. Right now, but we're doing the straw vote, too. We are doing both. Straw vote. I caused this on the chart. This is Sean's fault. Thing. Sean created no, trouble, Sean and I'm just following him. This is my fault. <laughs> <laughs> so you will have an opportunity to speak to the substance at the time of the vote, or you can speak to it now if you'd like. Um, we're not taking the actual vote on this. Does anyone else want to say anything? I'll hold my comment until we actually yeah, get to I'll it. I'll wait until we yeah. Okay, we'll wait for the thing. I do want to point out that, you know, I've always considered myself the expert on what I think, despite, you know, some people's, a lot of people telling me what I think. <laughs> so I will, um, when we get to the time of vote, explain what I think and why I think and um, how my thinking has changed over time. So um, this is just at this point just to approve the language. Could you um, read that language again, Lisa? I yes, I will. Sure Shall right. the charter be amended to change the form of government from first selectman board, board of selectmen to town manager form of government to take effect December 4th, 2017? Thank you. This is not to approve the change to town management, Jordan. It's just, <laughs> just the language. <laughs> no, no, right. no tweeting this one yet. <laughs> right. I, uh, I move that. I'll second it. 
I'll go with Mike on the second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 May I have a motion to take a recess? Uh, so moved. Second. Any further discussion? All in nope. favor, please say aye. Aye. No, we cannot. We can caucus, but...